Let, let's go over a very easy way to look at the system. Like I said, the best time to trade uh, this type of system would be, you know, during obviously volume uh, times because we look for volume spikes. These offset color speed bars, I call them speed bars, but they're really big volume spikes in the market. You're looking for offset color uh, speed bars to occur against ATR trend. We're trying to catch the rolling position algos, rolling position traders, etc. So we want to see when these offset color speed bars, green or red, occur in the market to look for potential major reversal points. Now, we've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trades uh, since I've uh, uh, set the system out that, that, that like to do this. So what they like to do, you want to see this ATR start printing first. Now, this is an 8 sim Renko. It's a larger time frame. I like seeing a larger time frame start printing these red or green ATR dots. Why? Because the market can only do two things, and, and you can really narrow the market down by doing this technique. It can go vertical or it can go sideways. If you look at any given day on any given futures, commodities, stocks, Forex, it goes vertical, meaning we're trending, or we go sideways, which we're in a chop market. So typically, three out of five days you trend, or two out of five you trend, and the other three you chop, other two you chop. So you need to, you need to know when the market is trending to catch these trend moves. That's what they say ATR dots do. They let you know, my ATR dots are totally different than any other ATR dots. They're not going to match up because I have a specific way how these print. So the algo starts printing these dots, and that tells me the market is now in a possible trend mode. And what I like to see is I like to see it stair step down in this larger time frame. I like to see two stair, stair steps down. One, two. If I see two stair steps down, that means I'm sitting lower highs. I'm looking for a what? I'm looking for an offset color speed bar to come up into my zone or right into my ATR. And I'm looking for an offset color speed bar. So if I get an offset color speed bar that occurs at that level, then it lets me know I'm possibly catching the rolling position traders or rolling position algorithms out there for a possible major reversal. Then what you can do is you can use your oscillator below. Here's your oscillator below. I have two oscillators below. I have one that is shorter term oscillator, one's a longer term oscillator. What I like to do is I like to see green print against overall red ATR trend. And let's say if you're specifically looking at this chart, I like to see the red, which is my smaller oscillator. I like to see it go below red, red against red. So what that tells me, or even if you want to do a little bit longer term oscillator, you can go magenta below red. So red below 90% or magenta below 90% for your entry would be here or here would be your fill. So that is going to put you in the best possible chance for success using this algorithm. Because what you're doing, you're letting the ATR set the overall trend. It sets the overall trend. You're letting the opposite color speed box get you into a volume spike where it's catching the wrongly positioned or counter trend traders in the market. We want them to counter trend trade the market. We want traders to think they're catching the bottom with all these lagging indicators like the MAC, like the uh, you know all these RSI, stochastic by itself, all these lagging indicators. We want them to think that they're catching the bottom because that pushes the market up for us. Our, my algo spots this big volume, and then what it does, it looks for a reversal point on my speed bars because there's a lot of speed in the market. They look for a reversal point when my oscillator crosses below the 90%. So, and if you want to do the 80%, some like the 80%, you can, I leave the code open for you to make it how you want to make it. But the basics of the system is you let the, let the ATR be red, you look for opposite color speed bar. I do not look for any setups, period, unless I have ATR running with an opposite color speed bar. There's no reason to look for any other setups with this specific algorithm because it is designed to catch reversal points using this technique. If you look at the next setup, it comes up to it. Now, this is straddling, so this, uh, the ATR is actually straddling the ATR, the, the, the candle, so this is a viable trade also. So here's your opposite color, um, opposite color 
speed bars, and then your oscillator, if you take a look at the oscillator, whether you use the red below red or magenta below red, that is your pull-in right there or right there. So either your fill is here at that level near the swing high or your fill letting it roll over a little bit near the swing high. Your stop is outside of these ATRs or a hard specific stop. So that's a great technique to use. Now what if you want smaller stops then what you can do, and I'll show you what trade we're looking for this morning when this happens, is if you look yesterday, what we do is that we have confluence. Now, so what I want to do is then I want to line the 8 sim up. Let's say we want smaller stops instead of just trading off the 8 sim Renko. So we know these are two big inflection points according to my methodology and the algorithm, how I have it programmed. So we know we're looking for, for specific reversals at these high probability turning points. So how can we get in the market instead of using an 8 sim? Can we use a lower time frame to fire in the market? Yes, we can. We can use what's called a 5 sim Renko which is a lower time frame, which will 12 tick stop will be suffice on catching these setups. So what we want to try to do is we want to see when we get up into the zone on the 8 sim, you want to see the 8 dots start trending red, but consequently that's when you want to see the 5 dots start trending red. All right, start trending red because now you have total alignment. You have the macro point of view, which is the 8 sim, which is a larger time frame, and it's coinciding with the micro point of view, which is the 5 sim. I have traders that are inside and outside this room that will not take any trades unless the 8 sim agrees with the 5 sim. And their accuracy, they're doing very, very well, is uncanny because what they're doing is they're letting a, they're not just trading off a smaller time frame. They're letting the large time frame start printing ATR dots because we know the market can only do two things. It goes vertical or it goes sideways. And if it's going sideways in a range market, you're not going to see these ATR dots start, set, start stepping down. You may see them go sideways, horizontal, and have one step down on the 8 sim. But it's very rare that you'll see several step downs where it's sitting lower highs, lower highs, lower highs without that market trending. And that's what we need to do. We, we need to put ourselves in a position for success off of a larger time frame and entry off a smaller time frame. So I know my larger time frame... Uh, and we know my time of day trading is 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning, specifically 9.45 to 10.45, and specifically 1.15 to the close on the S&P. But the volume happens between 9.30 and 10.30 in the morning and 1.30 and 2.30 in the afternoon. You get plenty of setups just in that two-hour window, morning and afternoon. But you know that we are in an ATR downtrend from 8, I mean from uh, what time was that? from, it started trending yesterday, what, 8.37, all the way to uh, almost our cutoff time at 10.10. So what you want to do then is you want to see, hey, do I have my 5 sim doing the same thing? Is my 5 sim showing the ATR dots? And my 5 sim is showing the ATR dots, so what does that tell me? It educates me as a trader that I'm in a trend market. And the market I know likes to do two things. It goes vertical and it goes sideways. So what do I want to put myself in a position? Do you think we're going to get a big runner in a sideways or chop market? No. Do you think we have a potential for a big success of catching a 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 S&P point run if we are going into these two time frames agree? Yes. Now you're putting yourself in the best high probability position to get a big runner. So then you can look at these tops with small stops. So if I look at my smaller time frame, what are the entry levels? Entry levels are opposite color speed bars with oscillator pulling you in at below like I showed you on the 8 sim. So if I look at every high probability chance to, to pull yourself in the market yesterday morning, there they are. And look how they all call the swing highs. That's not by chance. I'm not cherry picking trades. This happens over and over and over and over and over. All members will tell you that this is a high probability successful setup. Why? Because we're going with a ATR trend, we're catching the wrongly positioned traders on a volume spike or a speed up, and then what we're doing, we're using this oscillator. So if I pull this oscillator up, and if I look, I'm coming into my sell zone. That's my high probability sell zone. I got green speed bars. That's opposite color of the red ATR, 
that's pointing down. I'm in a setup, but that's not good enough. I can use the oscillator red below red or magenta below red or red below magenta or magenta below magenta, however you want to do it. If you want more confirmation, if you go magenta below magenta, you're just going to get a lower fill for confirmation. If you want to try to catch this near the swing top, you need to go red against red crossing, which is here, or you need magenta against red crossing, which is there for your entry. All right, but you can see how you can use the oscillator to pull yourself in on these chest setups. So if I'm looking at this setup then, and these are not small S&P trades. Now we all know my time of day trade is plus or minus five minutes at 940. So right here, this setup, when I got pulled in uh, at using my algorithm technique, was at 9.39. I've been preaching since we opened the room, 9.40 is my time of day trade. If you look historically in the market, you get big potential runners when you're trending plus or minus at 9.40, plus or minus at 10 o'clock, plus or minus at 10.30 on the S&P, plus or minus at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That has happened ever since we've been op we opened this room. And if you're trading pre-market, you're looking at 5 till five till 8 and 5 after 8 if you've got news coming out. But if you look, I preach about 940. So this setup happened exactly at the high pulling in on this level at 939 and 18 seconds. I mean, you can't get any better than that. So you come up, you have a volume spike, your ATR is going down. So let's take a look at the fill. Your fill is going to be here at that level. Pull yourself in red below red or magenta below red. So the low of this bar would be filled be 62. And let's see what the market does. The market goes all the way down just on that push alone down to 47. So you're looking at, you know, 10, uh, 10 on the 52, 12, 13, 4, what, 15 S&P points potential from here to here. This is not scalping, guys. This isn't going in and risking two points and trying to get three quarters of a point or trying to get two ticks or three ticks. These moves are very pronounced. So, if you, I mean, you get some nice runners when they both agree. If I look on this setup and this setup, we're talking some big moves. This is 76 from, from this level, and this is level is 70, and this level is at the low of the bar 61, and this level is 55, and this level is 49. I mean, you're talking about the market. Look at the market comes. The market comes all the way down to the 20s. We're talking when it started at the 70s, 50 S&P point potential by looking at specifically that one specific setup where the 8 and the 5 agree. And that's how you got to line it up. But you have to understand that the 8 and 5 agree and it's stair-stepping down, that's going to be your highest probability for success when these two time frames agree. Now we can take it one step further and go like this. Do you need market profile right here to show you when the big potential moves are going to happen? I love to use profile in conjunction with my setup with the 8 and 5 agreeing because it lets me know, since this has been around since 1985, price profile, volume since 1994, the volume profile is profiling the market force. So this blue line right here, this thick blue line, tells me the most volume is traded in the S&P on the average volume. And that derives this low value area green, high value area red. So what happens this morning, What we're going to, the trade setup that's ticking right now that I'm looking for this morning, I want my 8 SIM to start printing red ATR dots. Do we have that now? No, we're not printing red ATRs. We are yellow. Yellow is neutral. Yellow is neutral. We're not trending yet, so we sit. Once this chart starts printing red, then I'm going to look for this low value area to slice through. I want this 5-minute chart to go vertical down. I want to see a big five-minute vertical down bar. That should get this chart start printing red dots and this chart, my smaller time frame, to start printing red dots. Do I have red dots right now? No. Do I have red dots on the 8 sim? No. Yellow, neutral. Do I have eight dots, red dots on the 5 sim? No. Neutral. So what do you do? Sit. No setup. What happens, though, is what I'm going to look for and what I educate traders inside and outside the room all the time on, and this works on all markets. I don't care if it's futures, stocks, all traders that, that lease this program, a lot of traders trade the Euro now, British Pound, Aussie, you know, the CAD, it trades the, you can trade the Forex pairs, whatever, it doesn't matter. I got traders even trading options with this and also ETFs. So it doesn't matter what that you trade, 
it is the same exact setup. You're trading order flow. So my order flow this morning, what I'm looking for right now, I'm looking for this market to go vertical below the low value area. And once I cut through low value area, then I want to see my 8 sim and 5 sim to start printing red dots. Once I see that, then I can get involved in the market and I can start looking for opposite color speed bars to push it back up. So do you need to use market profile? Absolutely not. Can you just trade off these two charts? Yes. You can just trade off these two just like that. Wait for red, red, opposite color speed bars, use the oscillator, pull yourself in with small, small stops. But the advantage of using market profile right here is ticking live right now. The advantage is that it's pro, it's not my, this is not my opinion, this chart. It's not your opinion. This is not some oscillator, right? This is not some moving average, coverage, divergence that we always talk about. All these lagging indicators. There's thousands of indicators out there. Thousands. 99.9% .9 to me are worthless. Why? Because they don't trade order flow. Moving averages, worthless. Matt, worthless. You know, RSI, worthless. This stochastic down here by itself, right? Worthless. All that stuff is worthless unless you trade what the order flow of the market. So what market profile does, it's profiling the market right now. It's taking all the volume from all the hedge funds, all the prop firms, all the professional traders. Every time you or anybody else pulls a trigger, it's profiling everything and putting it into three lines. Green, blue, red. If I'm below blue, the VWAP and also the control point, I am bearish. If I'm above blue and I'm above the VWAP and the control point, I'm mildly bullish. If I get below, and I did a whole video on this, if I get below the low value area and the control point, which it is now, so right now we are mildly bearish. If it starts going straight through this low value area, I am majorly bullish. I'm, I'm bearish, I mean. It's the most bearish I can get in the market. You should not look at any longs according to market profile at all. None. Zero. You should be going short on every single little retracement you can, according to this algo over here, right? So right now, you've seen the volume spike here. We don't have dots printing, but you can see right now, it's mildly bearish. There's a volume spike. They're trying to roll this market over on this W uh, or M top right now. There's your volume spike. We just don't have any dots printing because it's not hard trending right now. We're oscillating. It's actually forming right now a head and shoulders pattern. You can see that shoulders, there's the head. There's the shoulders. If we break this neckline right now at uh, 41.82 and a half, these dots should start printing over here, which is still yellow. We're neutral, red, red, and then we should start seeing the market start rolling over. So what I want to do then, I can use market profile to gauge my temperature of the market. And I, I go over the video on this. If you want to go to daytradingthefutures.com, play videos, and I tell you how to gauge the temperature of the market. Remember. The market can only do two things. It can trend or it can chop. Don't make it any more difficult than that. If you're chopping, you're not going to get pop, possibly a nice 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 S&P move. But if you are, like we were yesterday morning, the temperature was what? So yesterday morning, if I look at it, the temperature is what? It's hot, right? So when you're in a hot market and the temperature is hot like that, and you see just red, 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 like this, that market temperature is hot, very hot. So what do we want to do? If the temperature is hot like this and when our other time frame agreed also, when both time frames agreed yesterday morning, we'll do the same thing this morning. That's a hot market to trade right there. That is when you need to really go to work with the system. So right now, we are what? Let's fast forward to these two charts. Yellow, temperature is cold. Nothing here also. We had a volume spike here, but nothing. I don't care about these yellow dots down here because guess what? I know that it's, it's not lining up. My eight is not lining up with my five. It's just the market's neutral. So why would I want to put my money at risk? I want to see it turn red. Now we're starting to first got my first red dot to start trending possibly. I want to see this ATR start printing red also. 
Then you got total alignment. And then I want to see market profile cut right through here. That's total trend alignment. And you start doing that, you start realizing the market's not fast anymore. It slows down. Because guess what? You're looking for the eight to start printing trend before you even look at anything else. So you can just fire this chart up and say, hey, I haven't had a possible setup since this morning right here. When they start yellow, add one stair step down, that's it. They try to catch the top up there, have a big move down. But since this morning, it's done nothing. I want to participate like yesterday morning when it is hot. The temperature is hot on the downside or the temperature is hot on the upside. Now, if you look at green on the green upside, the green is the opposite way. So if I'm printing green ATR dots, now I'm looking for opposite color red speed bars to catch the reversals. Caught the low, caught the low, caught the low. Did the five minute degree. Let's take a look. We'll go back to the previous day. And then we'll look for today's trading. I'll show you what we're looking for. And you're going to see alignment again. It, you just got to line it up. So we go here. Yesterday morning had that big downtrend. We saw that. Those setups. Let's take a look at the previous day when it started trending again. And then we had, what was it up? You want to see these speed bars come in on the opposite color time frame. So that's all we do. We're trying to look for alignment. All right.